Welcome to Moment of Tooth, a monthly series where we interview senior dental students and dentists to learn more about their stories and what it takes to be happy and successful in the field of dentistry. Okay, welcome to episode one. So uh, our first guest is going to be someone I have known for quite a while. Uh, so this is Shanae Olvacher. She's a final year dental student. She is vice chair of the Dental House Committee and also class rep for the final years. And she's also quite a bit of an Afrikaans school. Uh, <laughs> so I apologize in advance for forcing you to do an entire interview in English. Um, but I thought it would be really fun to have you on as one of the first guests. You've been a supporter of the channel right from the get-go. Um, and you've also helped me a ton both in the dental hospital and outside of the dental hospital. So welcome. Um, but <laughs> I think be, before we really get into all the dental school stuff, mm. I want to hear a little bit about how it is that you actually got into dentistry. What was the journey to dental school? Um, so I think first of all, um, I wanted to be so many things growing up. I wanted to be an actress. I wanted to be a singer. I have no talent whatsoever, but I wanted <laughs> to be a singer. <laughs> and then when I grew older, I wanted to be a spy for some reason. I have no idea why. <laughs> all of these things was on my bucket list. But I think growing up in high school, um, one of the biggest thing I knew I wanted to do is help people. And so I think inevitably it was going to be medicine for me. So I applied for medicine um, at all the different universities because it's very difficult to get accepted. But then unfortunately I wasn't accepted into any of the universities. So I um, decided to study BSc in order to get into medicine. BSc Bio. Um, BSc yeah, Biological Science. Um, and then I was in res in first year in a res called the Goede Whip. Um, I think it was definitely one of the best years so far. Um, I've met one of my most amazing and best friends, Shanae. Not the Shanae, other Shanae. <laughs> <laughs> And um, yeah, I think like her passion inspired me so much. She showed me the hospital, she showed me campus and after hearing what dentistry is all about and after hearing everything that dentistry stands for, I just, I fell in love with it. Like I was just so, so, so excited to start studying it. So yeah, in, um, after six months, I applied for dentistry in that six month um, like window BS, period. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so then I applied and I got accepted and then the dentistry journey began. <laughs> I see. Okay, so you started, you know, wanting to do medicine, didn't get in, so then you did the basic biosciences. Yes. And then after that, you then decided to go into dentistry and then got accepted for that. Um, I'm curious, what were sort of the main things that made you change your mind? Because you said, you, you know, you spoke to the other Shanae and she sort of changed your mind about the whole thing. So do you remember anything in particular that really sort of shifted things for you? Um, I think there's a few things. I think the first thing is being a woman, like the thing I mainly want to do is I really want to be a mom someday. And I think like studying the industry and um, like having that degree, I have a lot more time on my hands and I really wanted to do that. Like I didn't want to be called out at 11 o'clock in the evenings and not being able to be there for my children and stuff like that. So I think that was definitely one of the big reasons. Um, and another thing is when I was very, or like much younger in primary school, I had brain and I just remember the um, like the big huge difference it made in my life and like it gave me so much confidence just because I had like three or four malocluded teeth like changing that changed my self-image like so much more mm. and I think being able to make a difference even doing small things you make such a big difference and I think that was definitely another reason that made me switch my mind mm. Yeah, I think, um, so when I sort of started with the industry, I definitely saw it as more of, I don't know, I, I guess like a job, you know, just like something to do, it's pretty stable. Um, and only really like in dental school, I, I sort of noticed how much of an impact it has on other people's lives and also how much of an impact it had on my life. Yeah. Um, like at the start of this year, I got my braces removed after having like, braces three times you know so like I feel like for most of my adolescence I've had braces and then when it came off um, for 
last time, hopefully, knock on wood, <laughs> um, I realized how, how much of a confidence boost it gave me. And it, it really reaffirmed for me um, how much of a difference the, these sort of small procedures can have on someone's, you know, just overall quality of life. Um, so, okay, so now you decided on dentistry, got in, yes. you arrived. So sort of take us through what the past few years have been like for second year, third year and fourth year. Like what was kind of your, you know, your mindset in the various years? How has it changed over time? Things like that. Um, what a journey <laughs> it has been. You. <laughs> I think I've just grown so much in this degree. Like I think the one thing I definitely wanted to do is get myself out of my comfort zone. Like I really wanted to grow and I really wanted to do as much as I possibly can because I know after um, university, it's like it's the adult life and you have to do adult things. So I think one of the biggest thing I wanted to do is get out of my comfort zone. And you're the various years... <laughs> Um, yeah, it was like quite quite a roller coaster ride. Um, a lot of highs and a lot of lows, and then a lot of lows and a lot of highs. <laughs> like just, yeah. it's been a journey. But I think um, something that I've also learned in the industry is to try your best to have like really like a balanced life. And I think that's something that I still, for some reason, cannot successfully do. <laughs> but I think like you have to get. Um, hobbies and you have to do things that make you happy because if you only study and you only go to the hospital um, and like your whole life is dentistry is amazing but if everything is dentistry then your mental health will definitely yeah <laughs> yeah I think like the way I sort of think about it is I mean even if you have like a favorite dessert let's say it's like chocolate ice cream you know it's nice to have it but if you're gonna have it for every meal every single day over time you're just going to get completely fed up with it and you're going to start hating it mm -hmm. um so i think like the dosage matters you know Definitely. especially when it comes to dentistry because i think dentistry is such there's always more to do yeah and it's one of those things where if you're going to allow it to take up all your time it is going to take up all your time mm -hmm. you know we'll sort of push to try and study as much as possible um, and I think a lot of that is also sort of self-inflicted. Because uh, I think maybe. after a while, the lectures maybe also stop caring, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and we're just there like, no, we got to study everything. Um, I think it, it really gets drilled into us in high school. Because obviously there, your marks have a very big effect on what you can and cannot go study. Yeah. Yeah. But once you're in it, you know, it's more a thing of, can you do the work and can you do it well? And can you do it to the benefit of the patient? If so, like, isn't that good enough? You know, at that point, the difference between a 70% and a 90%, functionally speaking, I don't think there is much of a difference um, because all of that extra detail is so nuanced. By the time you actually see it in practice or you, you see it in a patient, it's, it's become sort of irrelevant. You would have probably forgotten it anyway. Um, and so when you do find those special cases that, you know, in a test, it, it gives you those extra marks, but in reality, you don't really see it that often. And when you see it, then you go out of your way to do a bit more research anyway. Okay, so I wanted to ask you, so when I was younger, like especially second year, I had this big anxiety uh, about clinics and clinical work and seeing patients. And even just when I went to go assist, I would feel like kind of intimidated. Did you have those kinds of feelings leading up to clinics or were you more so sort of excited to get there? What was your mindset leading up to the clinical years? Um, I think definitely excitement, but 10% excitement and 90% anxiety. <laughs> I was extremely nervous. Um, I think I just felt this very big responsibility because if you work with patients, even though you have your supervisors always supervising and always being around, you're still on your own and you still have to know some stuff. If something happens in like seconds, you have to be able to respond in seconds. And I think like knowing that and knowing I have a patient's not always life on my hands, but life on my hands, um, it was very intimidating for me. And um, yeah, I think that is also what pushed me to study harder and to be able to know what to do in stressful situations. And I think that helped. But um, also to come back to your whole, um, the thing about like marks and being driven by marks, um, 
I think even with that, like as you said, it is sometimes, even though it's very important to know a lot of stuff and even though it's very important to know it for clinical, for the clinical years and all of that, um, I just wish that it wasn't my prime focus, mm. like thinking back, because I think I missed out on so many amazing things with friends and family just to get 1% extra or 2% mm. extra on a test. And I just think that like for me, like you need to again get that balance of knowing like I have to study enough to know what to do with the patient but not too much that I miss out on the important stuff yeah yeah I, I mean I, we've spoken about this a lot in the past where um, I think we're sort of conditioned to think that like marks when you're a student or, or money once you graduate is like the main currency in life it's the main thing you should try to acquire more of but um i think in actuality the main currency is time you know um and a lot of why we work so hard and we try to get good jobs and things is so that later on we can have more time yes. but we can also you know take the opportunity now to make more time for ourselves to also enjoy ourselves while we work um because there is definitely, I think, sort of a, a point of diminishing returns after which it's like, you know what? I should rather just maybe put the books down and maybe go do something else. One hundred. Just so that, you know, it, it keeps you going as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if you show up to the hospital, you're burnt out, you're tired. That also isn't really to the benefit of the patient. Exactly. So exactly. Yeah, I think I think finding that balance is it's obviously difficult because there's a lot to balance yeah. um, and obviously you have to sort of take your work very seriously especially when you get to the clinical years mm -hmm. um, but I do agree as well I think I wish when I was a bit younger as well I didn't put such a big emphasis on marks um, because really it, it the stakes are a lot lower <laughs> at that point <laughs> yeah. it obviously um, you know everything is a bit more real once you start seeing patients yeah. but there is definitely, I think most dental students can give themselves a little bit more space uh, to just okay. relax, to take yeah. those kind of write-off days, those guilt-free days where you just decide, you know what, today I'm not working and that's fine. Yeah, and not feel anxious and yeah, yeah I definitely agree. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now that, you know, you're sort of reaching the end uh, of your studies and, you know, you can do most procedures I wanted to get your opinion on kind of just looking back on everything. What are some of the main things you like and that you don't like about dentistry? Starting with the things that you maybe don't like as much. Um, yo, it's difficult. I think I don't like the admin. Oh, okay, that's fair. <laughs> like that's calling fair. patients and doing portfolios. Like I know it's important and it's part of the whole process. But I think you're, it just becomes so much and sometimes you feel it's unnecessary because you have to study and you have to do so many other things mm. that admin is definitely number one on my list not, of not <laughs> Not something you're going to miss. <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I think not liking, that's it. But I think there's a lot of stuff that I actually do like. I think I've made so many amazing friends. Like, I feel like our class is definitely the best class. Um, everyone in it, like, everyone is so friendly. And even though we're tired, like, 100% of the time, everyone is still friendly, still, like, yeah, I think I absolutely love our class. Um, and, yeah, I think I love working with patients, like, making a difference. I remember this one patient, the first patient I saw, um, was a full denture case and I remember the one thing the patient didn't have teeth for 18 years and the only thing she wanted was to eat a mealy like that is the <laughs> only thing she wanted to do and I remember like it's something so small that I take for granted but after like giving her her teeth she was just so excited that she can go and eat even though technically it'll still it's be very <laughs> very difficult like seeing the smile on her face wow it was just one of the most amazing times and I feel like that so many times during the clinical years so even though it's very difficult and like there's a lot of lows and down points um I think when you have something like that everything just comes together and it's really like worthwhile okay so let's imagine you could now go back to when you were 19 you know first year second year what pieces of advice would you give yourself if you had to give yourself three main pieces of advice 
what would you what would you say to yourself um good question <laughs> spend more time um doing things that make you really happy is the first thing um spend more time with friends and family because you never know how long you still have left with them um and i think just try to live a little bit more in the moment because I think you um, sometimes get in this mindset of I just want to finish, I just want to finish, I just want to finish off. And um, I think like there is so many amazing things you miss because of that mindset. Mm -hmm. So I think like going back, I just would have like wanted to tell myself to just take it day by day and not wish time away. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, I think it's something a lot of dental students in particular sort of fall into this trap where they sort of set a goalpost and it's like oh if i can only reach this point if i can just get past this test if i can just finish this year if i can just get to the clinics um then everything will be fine then life will be good but the goalpost just kind of keeps moving like every time you achieve something there's something else that needs doing and so i think a lot of us go too far in the direction of delaying any sort of happiness um that it just becomes just this constant grind yeah. and we don't really spend time on anything that's not dentistry and even when we do there's this sort of guilt that oh I, uh, someone else is studying or yeah, yeah I should probably be studying as well yeah. um, and I think that th that's really good advice something I've also been trying to do this year is to just be a bit more present and just be like okay I'm here now yeah. I might as well enjoy it, you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, definitely. Uh, but yeah, it is tricky. Uh, so this while back, I was reading uh, this book called Happier. It was like a psychology book all about, uh, yeah, just kind of the research and the evidence behind sort of what makes the good life and what makes people happy. Um, and the way that the find it was really interesting where happiness is kind of just the sum of joy and meaning. Um, so on the one side, they like, you can't just have joy without any meaning. You know, there would be something like constantly going out, partying, not really caring much about the work at all. Um, you know, that's not really a recipe for long-term happiness. Um, and then meaning is more so defined as like the more difficult work, the things that you have to give a piece of yourself, you know, to, to get it. And you can't just focus on that either you can't just be working the whole time because then there's no no space for joy either. Um, and I think finding that balance is difficult. Um, but I think a lot of us realize that, especially in the earlier years, you can afford to have a bit more flexibility. Because <laughs> if you don't know something, it's not to the detriment of anyone. Like your marks maybe suffer a little bit, but that's it like no one dies <laughs> you know <laughs> definitely whereas in the clinic if you don't know something it's it's quite a problem um because you know that's what matters is mm -hmm. can you actually help the patient if you can't help the patient that's obviously a problem um but yeah i think a lot of us realize this way too late um but i think it's, it's also a factor of when we are younger and when the only thing that we're working towards is tests, then it's like, oh, okay, so this is the important thing. Yeah. Um, but I think, yeah, I think me as well, I wish I had a bit more perspective when I was younger to realize that like they, the world is a bit bigger <laughs> than just that tick, that test on Friday. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I definitely agree. Mm -hmm. And as you said, like even with the modules you have in first year, like there's so many things that I wouldn't say isn't necessary, but like you have chemistry and all of these things that you stress about so much, mm. but like it's not going to help you in the end. Like, yeah, just try to have a little bit more fun. And I think that's also something that I wish I had done mm. in first year. Mm. Yeah, and as, yeah, especially the things we do at the start, it's more just to give us like that broad base. Yeah. But the idea is not to know it in intricate mm. detail. Um, like I remember in molecular biology we had to do something called the Krebs cycle I sometimes still get waking nightmares <laughs> about the Krebs cycle and I still remember some of the um, like uh, molecules involved in that process and I'm just like wow I wish I had not put this much energy into it because uh, th this that info isn't that useful understanding yeah. the process as a whole that's useful 
you know, having this broad knowledge of things, especially at the start, um, that's good. Because later on, when you try to dive into the details, then, you know, you can understand all the different mechanisms and how everything comes together. Um, but at the start, yeah, I, I would say take a bit more time to just enjoy university life, especially when you get in the clinical years. And I mean, you as a final year would know this <laughs> <laughs> very well. Um, but there's a constant drain on your time and your attention. And even when you get home, there's still more to do yeah. because you're already trying to do as much as possible when you're at the hospital. Um, so, you know, I think like if you're a, a younger student, um, evidently the message we're, <laughs> we're trying to give you is just chill out a little bit um, and take some time to actually enjoy life. You know, obviously the work is important, but also have, have sort of a broad perspective as you're tackling all these various challenges. So, okay, at this point, I think you have, what, five, six months left? What is it? Yeah, I think about six. <laughs> okay. So run me through what your thoughts are at the moment, <laughs> leading up to the end of what has been a very long and arduous journey. Wow. Is it stress? Is it excitement? A lot of everything <laughs> just... <laughs> that definitely describes it <laughs> um i think at this stage it's like a lot of stress because everything is now coming together it is a lot of work we have all of this clinical quota we have to also get through and all of these mocks and like there's just a lot of stress that is placed on us but like i think by september i'll definitely just like still I'll, I'll get to experience um the more exciting turn of things like then we'll be able to um give our places for comserve which is something that i really look forward to um and yeah like we have our class photo as well which is also something i look forward to so i think by then after completing like tests and being able to feel like okay maybe i have passed this year, <laughs> then <laughs> i'll be able to be so excited yeah. because at this stage i have no idea if it is only six months or a year and six <laughs> months like, i still have no idea because i haven't done much mm. um I've, I've done so much but i haven't done like you know, like you know, it's just this in between um but yeah i think after september i'll definitely get all the excitement feelings i see and so what's in your mind what is sort of the roadmap ahead after finishing so i think i actually want to work for the government for um quite a few years it's really i love working with people who can't really afford dental treatment and to make a difference in their lives so i think i'll actually um work in government for a few years and then I think I want to study further. Like I really love orthodontics. It's definitely a passion of mine and it's something I really want to go and study further. Um, so yeah, I think after a few years in government, that's something I definitely consider. But yeah, I think it's there's still a lot of things to happen before then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was interesting. Um, so the other day we went to a party and we were chatting to some other people. And then uh, the one girl asked us, you know, what are our plans? postgraduate and we kind of specialize things like that and then we both said um, we're quite interested in ortho um, and then I realized it's kind of funny I feel like over the years we've slowly started morphing into different versions of the same person because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean I think it's especially back then uh, like his second year when we met we were both like really quiet more on the shy side um, and our confidence it was, it was sort of a, a slow incremental <laughs> you know uh growth and i mean it's it's interesting because i used to be the the class rep for the yeah, they group um and now obviously staying behind because i'm a champion <laughs> <laughs> um, and then she sort of stepped in to take my role and even in the dental house committee um i'm currently acting as the chairperson she's the vice chairperson um but i've said this before i feel like if something were to happen if i were to step down and we were to you know swap positions or you were to take chair i feel like not too much would change um because i feel like we we agree a lot on sort of how things should yeah. be run um and yeah i, I think even just wardrobe wise 
I feel like every time I see your outfit gets steadily more black and maroon. <laughs> so <laughs> I think if if anything, uh, dental school is just um, maybe a little bit of a cult, <laughs> and every you know you just spend you're forced mm-hmm. to spend so much time <laughs> with everyone else <laughs> that we all kind of start thinking together and we start <laughs> influencing each other a lot. Um, but yeah, that, that's been interesting to see. I think it's, um, I feel like dentistry is, and this is something I always tell younger students as well, if, if they're trying to gauge where the dentistry is for them as well. The thing I tell them is, at the very least, it will change your life. It will have a big effect on your personality, the way you treat other people, you know. It's really difficult to say like, you know, if you say you've just come out of high school now, I mean, it's really difficult to gauge, yes, I'm going to enjoy root canals, I'm going to (laughs) enjoy extractions one day. Like it's it's so difficult to gauge because these are all things that you only really um, get an aptitude for once you actually start doing them. But I think in general, if you have this mindset of you want something that is going to challenge you, um, and that is going to sort of make you tougher as a result of that, then I would say, you know, th- that's a good sign. Um, but if the idea is to just kind of live the easy life, I think dentistry maybe isn't <laughs> <laughs> the way to go. Or, all. you know, if, if you're sort of interested in just doing your own thing the whole time as well, I, I also don't think that's the way to go. Because it there, there's a big sense of community in dentistry, especially in dental school. That's something I really enjoy. Same. same. Um, and so... Yeah, I think while it may be hard to kind of gauge whether you're going to enjoy the actual procedures, I think your focus at the start should maybe more so be on on the broad things. Like, do you want something that's going to challenge you? Do you want a sense of community? And do you want work that you feel is, you know, very impactful? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, uh, you know, while we still have you here on (laughs) campus, um, what do you think you're going to miss the most? about dental school um so i think even though we didn't experience a lot of it like i feel like there's a lot of stuff that the university does um things like the panico challenge is something that i loved like growing up to see even though i didn't participate hopefully this year yeah. we will. <laughs> um but like being in the audience and like stuff like that was really amazing to me the denier the dentistry bra and like all the socials is definitely something i will miss the most without mm. a doubt um and i think also like the people um a lot of the lecturers like growing older i don't know if you agree but like growing older and going into the different years you really build a nice relationship with the mm. lecturers and like it is an amazing privilege to be taught by them and um even though <laughs> we have a lot lots of like street lecturers we have a lot of funny lecturers like there's a mix of everything yeah. and you get to learn so much from all the various different lecturers that like your for me it's the biggest privilege like i really i love being able to be um taught by them and i think that's something that i'll definitely miss because um who am i gonna call if something goes wrong <laughs> <laughs> in comserv <laughs> usually when i panic dr marbled or someone is always near to help me and yeah. like for for being in in comserv that's something that's going to be very difficult um and i think yeah that's something that i'm definitely gonna miss i see and um do you think you're gonna miss the bullying from dr hamaldin and dr buchanan <laughs> Who you guys might know at this point, they have been on the channel a few times. Um, one of their favorite sort of pastimes um, seems to be bullying the two of us. I think I actually will. Yeah, I won't. For some I, reason. I won't. I'm sorry. For some reason, it brings me like the biggest joy, but you're like, they, you're some days. <laughs> Some days I go home and I just think, yo, what a day. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, even for them, like, it's it's really nice to have such a nice relationship. Yeah. Even though it's bullying 100% of the time, <laughs> it's still nice to build very good relationships. Yeah. yeah, I think what you said earlier where, you know, um, you get lecturers with very different attitudes sometimes. Uh, the thing that I like to tell people as well is, remember, like, there's still people. Like all of us are, you know, we're dental students, that's like our job title, but we all have our own personalities and things. Um, And it's much the same with the lecturers. Like, yes, they are lecturers, 
that doesn't mean you can't you know be friends with them <laughs> like, like they are still people you know they also don't want to go to work and yell at people and just be angry the whole time i think <laughs> um <laughs> but a lot of them you know most people in general are pretty friendly it's just up to you to sort of make that first move i think i think I a lot of agree. people like stress themselves up mm. and they think oh the supervisor is there to mark me down on my procedures <laughs> and to catch me out in the test like that you know that's not why they're there you know they want to teach you they want to help you um and yeah i think just keep in mind that they are just people they also want to have a good time so if you can sort of come up with a, a good attitude you know maybe on the day maybe the few interactions you've had with them they weren't in the best of mood but if you can just sort of keep that positive mental attitude um it will definitely sort of rub off on the people you interact with. Um, there's this um, saying that I like, which is that your vibe attracts your tribe. So wow. if you do sort of, you know, uh, keep yourself positive and, and you try to just focus on growing and getting better, you sort of attract those kinds of people, yeah. you know. Whereas if you're just going to be negative the whole time and complain, then look, we all complain that's just part of it okay sometimes <laughs> that's that's what you need sometimes after a long day we all just sit in the lab we pretend to work and we mainly <laughs> just complain <laughs> and at times that's also fun and it has its um value but if that is sort of your whole mindset the whole time then you're going to attract people who are like that as well and just kind of become suspicious circle um <laughs> So yeah, no, I think it's good as well, especially with the lecturers, because you do interact with them a lot. Like, try to, in a way, if not, you know, be friends with them, just at the very least, be friendly with them. <laughs> I definitely think it makes a big difference. Like, even comparing myself, like, from third year to fifth year, it's, it's nicer to go to the hospital. Mm. It's nice to build really good conversations with them. Um, because yeah, like studying dentistry, we all have kind of like the same mindset. And so um, all the conversations is always interesting. And like, I think it definitely made such a difference just being able to build amazing relationship with the lecturers. Mm -hmm. And do you think, um, uh, this is something I always think about a lot is, how do you feel about kind of your social life taking a bit of a hard reset? once you finish because at, at the university you know it's this thing where if you run into someone at the hospital at the very least you have like one thing in common <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> you at least have dentistry in common um but now you're sort of you know out in the bigger world and most often you're probably going to be like the only dentist there you know <laughs> Um, yo, I think it's actually difficult. I remember one time, like, I have this very small little denture on my keychain. And I remember going to pick and pay, and the guy who needed to sanitize my hands literally didn't want to allow me into pick and pay. He thought I was the most suspicious person in <laughs> the entire world. <laughs> and, like, when going to the hospital, it's not like that. Like, I just feel like yeah. it's much more difficult because we are so alike. It's much more easier to communicate and have things yeah. in common and do stuff. And then when you do it in the outside world, it's much different. Yeah, because, <laughs> like, I mean, in general, like, dentistry is weird. Yeah. Like objectively it's a weird thing to like people look in people's mouths for exactly a living, right? like people don't understand why, why yeah but obviously all thinking. of that gets normalized you know at the hospital yeah. and everything yeah. um <laughs> but yeah i feel like for everyone else it's just like oh kind of weird <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> it's very weird. Um, mm. So yeah, I think it's a very good question. Like, I have no idea what to expect. I have no idea how to communicate with anyone else than, <laughs> <laughs> than dental students. So it's definitely going to be something that again puts me completely out of my comfort zone. Mm. But yeah, I'm very excited. But yeah, I mean, as you mentioned earlier as well, that is kind of the, the kinds of challenges that you look for is like yeah, the, the yeah. things that sort of push you outside of your comfort zone. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what do you think to end things off is kind of going to be your mindset going into the rest of the year and sort of going into being an actual dentist? Um, I think it is to like 
learn as much, much as I possibly can with all the resources I have now. And then afterwards, just, um, I think, spend more time on myself and um, yeah, like being able to have the time to visit family and friends and um, yeah, like being just having time yeah. <laughs> in essence to do other things that makes me happy. Like I'm very excited for that. So yeah, I'm very, I'm just, I'm glad that it's almost done <laughs> because yo, I don't think I would have survived another year. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's been quite a ride and I really enjoyed every single moment of it. Okay. But yeah, I think we can wrap things up there. Uh, do you want to end it off with the, the, the signature expression? Ooh, good luck out there. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Yeah. <laughs>